All right. So fire away. Yeah, let's let's get started talking. I'll say hi. Hi, Frank. Hi. Hi, Chris. <laughs> you know, introduce yourself. Uh, say say who you are and who your company is. Uh, I'm Frank Nacarato. Uh, I'm the founder and president of uh, Quantum Robotic Systems. Uh, we make robots, uh, in particular uh, stair climbing service robots that will help you carry things from room to room and even upstairs. You guys have been in a, a very much like a development cycle for the last little while, kind of like going through idea iterations and trying to find product market fit, right? We, we, we initially started with a version of a um, uh, stair climbing uh, version about the, twice the size of QB called Steppy. And that was a proof of concept. But we realized that the initial market might not be for a service robot, uh, but rather for an automated cart, something that will help movers or delivery people, couriers, take heavy loads up and down stairs. And we focused on that. And we took our, our Dolly product, as you can see over my shoulder probably, um, uh, to the stage where we had our first uh, um, interest in, in commercial sales. And then 2020 happened. And uh, the moving industry got hard hit and nobody was buying capital equipment. So we had to do a rapid pivot uh, mid-year and we decided to accelerate our robotics uh, uh, product, uh, bring it more to the forefront, which is why Rosa uh, came into being. Rosa is our robotic stair climbing uh, assistant. Uh, its initial application will be for uh, seniors or people with mobility issues uh, to stay in their home longer. Um, but then as we developed uh, Rosa, uh, we realized that we can spin off a smaller, more accessible product and that w might generate the, our initial sales a lot faster than any of our previous uh, concepts. So this is, this is where, where the QB uh, 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 product came about. It's really derived out of our work from uh, Rosa and it does everything that Rosa does except climb stairs. I'm interested to know, you know, what kind of background did you have uh, coming into, you know, starting your company and, and also, you know, did that background like mean that you were kind of better at picking up CNC or do you feel like, you know, you got into it fresh just the same? Good question. Uh, uh, I, I had heard of it. <laughs> um, no, I, I mean, my background is in engineering. Uh, uh, went through the uh, University of Toronto um, um, engineering science program in undergrad in the aerospace option. And uh, then I got into my graduate work and I specialized in robotics, you know, hence quantum robotic systems. I'm not a machinist myself, but I have uh, uh, used uh, um, uh, equipment in, in machine shops, never before a, a uh, CNC mill. Uh, or any uh, CNC uh, equipment. Cool, yeah, so, so uh, this is like a company that you started uh, before you even had your, your CNC. You kind of like started this using some other manufacturing methods beforehand, right? In fact, uh, before we got the, the mill, we kind of were very much in R&D mode and, and prototyping mode. Uh, before the company started up in, in full force, uh, we actually contracted out all our fabrication. So that was, that kind of allowed us to avoid making any heavy duty investment in, in fabrication equipment while we worked with uh, George Brown College. We got, you know, a few small scale things here and there, but you're right, it wasn't, it wasn't we didn't uh, go to Long Mill uh, until, let's see, three years into the, uh, the company, so it was a very slow startup, um, but now we're we're using it quite extensively. So I was going to ask, out of all of the machines that are out there, you know, there there's a, there's a variety of hobby CNC machine options that exist on the market. I'd be interested to know, you know, what drew you to the long mill in particular. You're right. When when we were in the market for for um, a, a 
bench top um, uh, unit that had a bigger bed than, than I think Mill One had. This was right at the time when uh, uh, you guys were uh, announcing that you were launching Long Mill. And we had a look at the specs and it was the larger one, the, the 30 by 30 format. And um, we compared it in terms of capability uh, to other um, benchtop uh, CNC routing systems. And it, I mean, price point was great. Uh, I liked the, uh, the rail design uh, because I was familiar with it from your original unit. The, si the size, the, um, the, the rigidity, and yeah, for the features that it offered um, uh, for the price point, it compared very favorably. So all those combined uh, meant that uh, the decision was quite, quite easy. And, and I, I get a sense that you are receptive to uh, your users when you ultimately you're going to do the next generation. Um, I can sense that you're listening to uh, the need for different requirements. So I expect that uh, it'll only improve going forward. Yeah, that's definitely the plan. <laughs> Yeah, so when it comes to business, sometimes you kind of have to like make investments uh, preemptively. It's it's kind of like a bit of a risk that you take on to the future right. of your company. Um, and sometimes when people come to me and they say, I'm starting a business where I'm going to be making signs all the time. Uh, would you recommend the long mill to me? Uh, sometimes it, if it's a, I, it makes sense for me to say yes, and sometimes it makes sense for me to say no, I think you should really be investing more in a more expensive CNC, you know, for the long term. Um, I'm sure this is all stuff that you kind of thought about when when it came to deciding, you know, what sort of machinery you want to invest right. in for your business. So, so how did that, you know, cost benefit analysis uh, end up to this conclusion? Well, Long Mill offered a, a great risk mitigation option because we needed a, an intermediate solution, uh, something that will allow us to fabricate the first, you know, several hundred units, I want to say, uh, and uh, confirm that we have, you know, market traction, that, that, uh, uh, that there's a need for this machine out there. You know, as you know, we're taking a very hard look at, at uh, uh, using uh, uh, crowdfunding uh, uh, particularly uh, Kickstarter uh, for our for our QB uh, unit, because as I said, we we just got our first initial sales, uh, which is great, and we believe there's a lot of interest there based on our our uh, feedback we've received on social media. Um, but it's a it's a big question mark. Uh, will there be enough uh, interest in a you know uh, a service robot that can um, do Things like carry things your carry your carts back and forth between rooms, uh, uh, tow your uh, heavier loads between. Uh, I mean, one of our initial uh, applications is uh, in a machine shop that wants to use one of our units to uh, carry carts from point A to B. We're looking at using the machine in uh, in uh, greenhouses, uh, everything where there's a where there are long rows. So there are many applications both in the home and in in industry, but until you actually put it out there, you don't know if uh, if your your market numbers are just a, a pipe dream. And as we see the, um, the sales uh, ramp up, which hopefully we'll see that, uh, yes, it, 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 we will very likely have to think about the next level up in terms of of um, uh, fabrication capacity. But until then. Long Mill has filled the gap. We, we can, uh, it's within feasibility that we can continue using Long Mill or maybe a pair of Long Mills uh, to fulfill our first uh, batches. We're not building, um, you know, electron microscopes or satellites or things that require uh, the utmost precision. Um, the precision we get out of Long Mill for the time being uh, is more than adequate. So uh, in, in fact, when we compared parts made um, between Long Mill and ones uh, on a larger, purportedly more precise production machine, 
we really couldn't tell the difference. Uh, the, the, the delta was, was insignificant. So why not go with the more affordable solution as far as you, you can take it? Zeros cost money. Uh, the more precision, the more decimal places that you add um, uh, uh, is, is expensive. And you have to think at the design level, uh, am I building an electron microscope or am I building a, a utilitarian tool that where um, uh, it's good enough, you know? Uh, you don't need as many decimal places. You don't need as much precision. Uh, will it still run adequately? So, um, yeah, the, the idea about having a farm of these uh, is, is really attractive, um, especially when we get, again, if your budget uh, allows for either one big professional grade um, uh, CNC router versus two or three long mill, um, if that one giant machine goes down, you're out of business until you can get it back up and running. But if one long mill goes down out of three, you still have 67% of your, your capacity going. That's awesome. Yeah, so how has been your experience using the, the long mill? Uh, generally excellent. Uh, we've, uh, it's been running for about a year now. When you look through the montage videos and photographs, you'll You'll see us unboxing it, and, and Matthew and Ben actually put it together and ran it through its first, uh, first jobs. One of the, I guess, the, the attractive features of the, of the scaled-down machine is it's far less intimidating. I know it's exactly the same principle as a large, you know, 4 by 8 uh, format machine, but uh, it's much more approachable, and um, I jumped in, and and with the help of um, uh, some of the guys here who are much more expert than I, uh, than I was, uh, I was able to master it in a couple of days. I was running, I went from zero experience to actually running jobs uh, within a couple of days. Uh, we've since now trained two or three others on it uh, who have reached a stage where they can, uh, they can uh, run jobs uh, independently. We use SolidWorks. And going from SolidWorks to um, a, a running uh, job is, I mean, I think the fastest I've done it is within 45 minutes. Going from like a, a complete blank slate design to a finished um, part. In general, it's been, uh, it's been great. That's awesome. So when it comes to making the parts for your uh, robotic prototypes and, and actually for for like some small scale production, right? That's what you're using it for. Um, what kind of uh, materials are you using the machine for, and like how are you putting it through its paces? Well, I can show you. I mean, this is uh, this is QB. Uh, this is our our latest uh, robot. I would say 90% of the of the parts that are fabricated um, are produced on long mill. So primarily out of uh, ABS plastic. So you see the you know the uh, the outer shell and the, and the, uh, the inner workings. Its big sister, Rosa, uh, the actual stair climbing module that sits on top of this, uh, again, about 90% of the parts were cut on this machine. So we're actually making mechanical pieces that have to mesh together. We have, we've made gears on the thing. We've made um, parts that move relative to each other. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of MDF prototyping. So before we commit to uh, making it in the final plastic form. Uh, we prototype it up in, in, in MDF and uh, that's been a, a dream. We can do, we can knock off uh, prototypes really quickly. Moving over to uh, ABS and, and uh, high density polyethylene, again, an, not an issue. Uh, it's, if it worked in the MDF, we get the same kind of uh, quality in the, um, in the plastic. Well, even better. I mean, uh, ABS is kind of nice to cut. It, uh, it produces some nice clean cuts. Um, and uh, we haven't gone to uh, many other plastic materials. Uh, uh, there's some uh, thinking about going to acrylic for some, uh, some of the show surfaces to, because it's you know, nice looking and also we can get different colors in acrylic. Uh, so we might try cutting acrylic uh, soon. Uh, also for, for light pipes because we're adding uh, LEDs to the interior of, 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 uh, of QB, 
Yeah, so we're, we, you know, right now there's not a lot going on in terms of, of uh, you know, decorative lighting or, or, or indicators on the outside, but we want to uh, put in some, uh, uh, you know, it would be nice if she had a face uh, that's illuminated. Um, and we want to try, uh, uh, because we focus primarily on, on plastic, because it's, the, it's an easy material to cut. Uh, and we have done some experimentation with, um, with uh, aluminum. And this is the next phase, because we have another machine, um, Dolly, which is a, um, a stair climbing movers cart. And it's rated for lifting 500 pounds. And much of its construction is in aluminum. But again, planar uh, 2D parts, uh, nothing that requires a lot of exotic machining. And our this year, we hope to start cutting aluminum on, on either this machine or its sister uh, if we do get a duplicate. Um, so I think all of that is within your wheelhouse, as far as I know. And it hasn't really kept us back. Yeah, it seems like, it seems like um, now that you've got your, your long mill in-house to do this work for you, it's, it's not only changed the way that you do the manufacturing, but it's also changed the way that you do the design. Absolutely. When we're doing a design review, if there's a part in there that, you know, uh, requires 3D machining, we always challenge it and say, can we do it uh, in, you know, uh, a two plus one, you know, two and a half degree uh, machining? And almost, in almost all cases, the answer is yes, we can do it uh, this way. So um, it, it greatly simplified our design and our fabrication process. So we're not reliant on um, uh, big heavy duty outside shops. I would prefer to be able to cut it in house out of a simple, you know, flat pack, uh, you know, 2D um, material rather than to go to anything more, more complicated than that. And uh, the machine has been great for that. Cool. Well, thanks for joining me today, Frank. It was really great talking to you. And it's been really cool learning and hearing from you about how uh, a machine like ours can kind of bring your production in-house and allow you to produce your own robots uh, at a small scale um, for production purposes and also for uh, potential you know, product implementation as well. Well, it's been a real pleasure. Uh, thank you very, very much for the opportunity to yeah. uh, talk to you about this and talk about our, our experience. I'm very happy to, uh, uh, to talk up um, uh, Long Mill and, and uh, CNC and all your accomplishments. Um, it's, it's served us really well, and I'm, awesome. I'm happy to uh, uh, tell your, your followers that, uh, 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 how well it's fit into our, into our little company. See you, Frank. Take care. So here we go again. So now I'm just confirming that I'm recording. And I'm recording. And we're good to go. So sorry, say that again. You're, you're planning a trip. You're going to drive to... Yeah. And like see what they were doing with their machines and just kind of like interview them, you know, just take pictures of the projects they were working on. Well it sounds like it sounds like a great idea. And then and then what happened? <laughs> then the pandemic happened. Yeah. <laughs>